traditionally it'd be loaded up in a in a wad like this paper and then you you fill with this one you fill the uh, tube up with gunpowder and then you shove uh, paper in there to hold the gases in and then you take your ramrod and this is similar to how you would do this is exactly how you look well yeah the powder charge would be held separate and then now you've got powder all the way to here okay. to there with wadding and then you take your your cannonball in this case a little ball bearing it's a little <laughs> and you ram that home. So you pack it in there pretty tight. Yeah, pack it in there pretty tight. Now you've got cannonball. Now normally you'd have it back here, but I put a lot of powder in there. And so now we're going to have to take our little homemade funnel and you pour some powder in here and, the touch and then you let Andy light it. Whoa. <laughs> 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 that was crazy. What you just saw there was a tiny little cannon that could fit in the palm of your hand um, that Colby brought. Some crazy shenanigans. He just loaded it up with black powder, put a little uh, bearing, ball bearing in it, and the thing was freaking loud. It surprised me. It was powerful, and it was pretty fun to play around with. A uh, good way to start this video. If you're new uh, right now to this video, this is a three-part video series on building a cannon and carriage for the Alamo. Um, so if you want to learn more about this project, I highly recommend you go check out the first and second video. The first one, we turn a wooden pattern uh, for the casting of the bronze cannon. Uh, the Verdon Company uh, up in Ohio, Cincinnati, I believe. I may be getting that wrong. They casted this cannon, did an amazing job, uh, and they used my pattern to do it. And then I'm building the carriage, which is we started in the last video. In this video, we're going to finish it all up. So where this starts is a really exciting point where the carriage is assembled and together, and we're going to fit that cannon on it. I wanted to invite everyone out involved to help do that. Uh, so we had Colby here uh, and Ernesto, who were both historians at the Alamo and a huge part of this project. And they're the ones who reached out to me to do it. My good buddy, Jason Thigpen, uh, who is gonna be a huge part of this video. We're gonna see some footage of him here soon. And then obviously my awesome apprentice, Robert, was here to help out getting this thing fitted on the carriage. Now I do wanna jump in and start with Jason. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I've known Jason for a while. He is the owner of Texas Heritage. All of his social media stuff will be linked in the description. You should go check him out. He's a very talented leather worker. In fact, this piece back here, which I'm not sure if you can see, that holds all my tools, was made by him. My shop apron was made by him. Um, he's gotten into forging lately. So I asked him if he was up for forging these straps uh, for the carriage and he jumped on the opportunity. So, he was kind enough to shoot some footage and send that to me and I cut together this cool little four or five minute video of him knocking out the straps. Uh, he also forged uh, a hinge that holds the strap on, which you don't really see in, in this section of video. And then he forged the front kind of pin wedge system that locks that strap down. So let's jump in and watch that footage now and then we'll get into fitting this cannon. So today I'm gonna to start on the trunnion caps for this uh, cannon build. Um, starting out with some mild steel bar stock that's half inch thick and three inches wide. And the first step that we need to take uh, with this is to bend it into the correct curvature to fit the trunnion itself on the cannon. Um, I've built a simple little jig uh, for taking care of this process. And so the next step is to throw these guys in the forge, heat them up, and we'll get them bent. All right, I'm getting ready to bend my first piece in my jig. Um, it's heating up in the forge right now. Now, one thing I have found on my practice pieces is that heat from the forge, at least one heat alone, is not enough to bend this whole thing. Um, it's a big, thick piece of steel. It takes a lot of muscle, and uh, it seems like it needs at least two or three heats. Now, once you start to bend it, it doesn't fit in my forge that well. So I found the best combination is to go ahead and bend it as much as I can in the jig on the anvil, and then when it starts to get too hard to bend, I switch over to a rosebud tip on my oxyacetylene torch and heat the areas that I need to continue to bend and do them a little bit at a time. Um, I get really consistent results that way, so that's the method I'm going to uh, pursue in these next couple of months.
All right, so first morning, I got both of the trunnion caps bent to a very consistent radius. I'm happy with how both of those turned out. Next step is going to be folding both of the legs outward to actually mount to the carry. So a big thanks to Jason for um, knocking those out. He did an amazing job. Should be proud of that. Thanks, Jason. Let's roll back to my shop now and uh, get all the crew together and get this thing uh, on to the carriage. The first thing we're going to have to do is cut out the hole in the side of the carriage to meet half that uh, diameter of those trunnions. Okay, so we start this process by basically taking a jig we drill the hole in it the size of the trunnions. Uh, it's a 3 and one eight Forstner bit I use to just drill the hole out. And then I use a bearing uh, with a bottom cutter to ride on that uh, jig and just position it on that side of that carriage so that it cuts you know, half of the circle. Get that cut started. It cuts about a half inch deep. Take it to the bandsaw. Take out the waste on the bandsaw. And then we come back with a much bigger router bit uh, to cut out the rest of that waste. And then we'll have to flip the part and come with a bottom bearing bit and get that last sliver of waste out. It's kind of a tedious process, but you're dealing with thick material, so it just takes a little bit of time to get all that cleaned up. So the trick here is um, obviously we've got the engine hoist. We're dropping it down and we just kind of want to see how it sits in there initially it sit a little bit too deep those straps need to come over the top of the trunnion and kind of have somewhat of a clamping pressure on it um, and so jason had a really good idea of cutting a couple sliv slivers of leather and actually dropping those in there that's what we're doing right now is putting little, little leather pieces down in there and then that kicked those trunnions up just enough to um allow those straps to fold down just right on top of them and really lock it in place. Yeah. 
And this is just one of those cool moments. I, every once in a while I get to have in my shop where I have a collection of uh, really just interesting people who have been involved in a project we've been working on. We're just kind of talking shop and uh, going over things and admiring the work that we've put into this and the, how it's all come to fruition and we're seeing the finished product. Okay, so once everybody cleared out, Robert and I got back to work. So that carriage was only dry fitted while that cannon was on it. So we disassembled it, took it all apart, put another coat of oil on everything, and then we glued it together, fully assembled it, put all the hardware into it. So that those two blocks right there you see have glue on them, and then these axle pieces drop into their dados, and they glue in as well. And then everything gets bolted together with that Old West, old West Iron hardware, uh, which I'll link in the description. I mentioned them in the last video, but they provided all the hardware for this carriage. Um, and it was just really nice, well-made, uh, kind of old-school hardware. So I used two 6-inch long 5 8 lag bolts for the front axle. Uh, instead of going all the way through a threaded rod, really couldn't do that because we got the straps on top. So we just used uh, these lag bolts. A little tough getting these in there. I had originally drilled my pilot hole a little too small, so we had to come back, drill out a bigger hole, and... Uh, kind of muscle them in there, but we got them in. I guarantee you that axle is never coming off because those things are solid in there. So once we got it all bolted together, we were able to get it down on the ground. And this was really one of the hardest parts of the entire build where I felt like I kind of got it wrong. Um, so these were the spikes that Jason forged. Uh, to hold on the straps. One of them is a hinge and one of them is on the forward side and it has a steel wedge that locks that strap down. And the design for these was to uh, hammer them in. So I drilled, uh, Jason kind of walked me through it. I drilled a step pilot hole and uh, there's just a really fine line between getting that hole the right size to where those, those nails really lock in and getting them too small where it's loose. And um, I split it right here. They're basically steel wedges. So if you don't drill those holes right and you force it in there, you're just gonna split the wood. And the disadvantage we had here was we already had bolt holes, 5 8 holes for that threaded rod. And it just, it was the one part of the carriage I wish I had done a little bit better at. Ultimately it worked out. We were able to repair the split, glue it back together. We went a little bit looser on our holes and I, I kind of found that sweet spot. I really probably should have drilled a few test holes instead of diving right into this, but of course, I just went for it. Uh, and after we split the first one, we kind of figured it out. But the, the problem was the ones on the front, I was super scared of because those were you know, only about an inch from the end of the board. So you're just so close to the edge of the board that um, you're really likely to, sp to split that. So what we ended up doing was drilling those holes fairly large. So I took some really high quality epoxy, actually made by Total Boats, this Thixo stuff, and I just put that down in the hole and, and that sealed the hole and it grabbed the hold of that wedge. It's never coming out. Uh, obviously, it's not the ideal way to do it, but it's kind of how it all worked out. And I uh, learned from that. And we'll do a little bit differently when we move board. And you can see looking at it here, when you hammer that steel wedge in, if you're not locked in tight, all you're going to do is loosen uh, that out. So it's, it's a fine balance. And uh, honestly, it really what needs to happen is instead of having spikes on the end of these, we need to get some threaded rod on them so we can actually bolt them on and they're mechanically attached on there. So lesson learned, you move on. Uh, never built a carriage before, so getting through it with this being the minimum of problems, that's pretty darn good. So I couldn't resist dropping the cannon on there one last time. Make sure everything fit, make sure the straps were all good, and get some really nice photos of it. Um, and then obviously I just couldn't resist pushing it around the floor and making sure that it worked. I was really surprised at how well it rolled. I mean, I really was surprised. It's hard to push, it's a lot of weight. You got a 400 pound cannon on there, but it rolled pretty nicely, which uh, felt pretty good that that all came together. So the last bit here is a wedge block that's gonna go underneath the base ring of that cannon, kind of where that cascabel is. And that just pushes forward and back and that raises and lowers your cannon. Uh, so Robert right now is working on fitting the spline that's gonna ride in that dado you see. So he's just using a hand plane, kind of working it to get the fit right. I'll be honest with you, um, this is not Robert's fault, so my guidance, but that, that's, that was a little too tight. We made the tolerances more within furniture level. 
Uh, and I after, I went back out to the Alamo a couple weeks later, and that thing was locked in there pretty good. So it takes a few. Let's take a few more shavings off of it to loosen it up. So we just step it out, get the screws nice and evenly spaced, and just glue that and screw it on. I don't know what it is about this red oak, but man, it is hard. It is extremely hard. This is the one that came off the yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember being like fresh out of college in like 2006, going out to the chainsaw mill and spending eight hours cutting it up. Say something to it. <laughs> Johnny! Hello? <laughs> see if I can get some downward pressure on that. A little bit more. Cool. Okay, so that closes down the build side of this uh, carriage. Uh, we finished it up with that wedge block. And, uh, you know, basically Colby and Ernesto, in the beginning of this video, you saw them drop the cannon off. That was on a Friday. The following Thursday, they came uh, to pick it up, actually Thursday at the end of the day, um, because on the, the next day on Friday, they had a very large unveiling. So there was a lot, there was a deadline here, and there were some important people at this unveiling. They had the land commissioner, the mayor of San Antonio, lieutenant governor of Texas, uh, all there to do this really cool unveiling at the Alamo of the Cannon. So Colby and Ernesto had to pick it up on Thursday. That night, they unloaded it, and then they put it in place in front of the Alamo. So it sits at the Palisade Wall. You walk up to the Alamo, it's right there to your right. Um, permanently on display and I just can't be more pumped to have my work sitting at the Alamo I mean it's a huge honor I'm so grateful that the state of Texas trusted me with this project um, and it sounds like maybe hopefully there might be a few more of these in the future uh, for my shop which obviously means we got a happy client and that's all that really matters that's the most important thing uh, so I want to finish this video up with some footage of us hanging out at the Alamo for the unveiling. I took my family down there. Uh, Robert and his family came down, his wife, Nicole, and uh, we all kind of got an opportunity to see this really cool presentation uh, of the Cannon Carriage. So I want to say thanks to you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, I really appreciate those who watch it, who leave the, the, you know, the encouraging comments. Um, it means a lot to me, so I appreciate that. That's enough rambling. Let's go watch the unveiling. And again, thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.
part. Everyone's like, holy shit. This guy knows. He's getting ready to heck over here. I think that was the little round ball. Did he look? Oh, it's flannery. You can go in here everywhere. It's too windy. The lighter won't light. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's in there. <laughs> Holy crap, it's in there. Hey, it's in. Oh, it is. wow. Yeah, good. <laughs> it happened so fast, I got a picture, not a video. <laughs> yeah, actually, I have a video I can share with you. It's cool, huh? Well, I can't use that piece anymore. Unless you make one of those Alamo. <laughs> and then I'll leave it in there. It's crazy. It becomes a wall. It's it's amazing how fast it is. Yeah, it's like snap. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Can't hear you. <laughs>